In this video, we're going to talk about the signum function. This is how we have defined it. f from r to r, this is defined by y equals to fx and this is also a piecewise defined function which means it behaves differently for different inputs. So this is the definition. It gives you 1 for x greater than 0, it gives you 0 for x equal to 0 and it gives you minus 1 for x less than 0. So it has these three different values which you get for different values of x and x belongs to real numbers. Let's try putting in some values. When you put in x as 1, because it's positive, you get 1. When you put in x as 2, because this is also positive, you get 1. You're getting the same thing. When you put in 3, you still get 1. When you put in 4, you still get 1. Even if you put 4 billion, you'll still get 1. As long as the values are positive, you get 1. What about 0? So when you put 0, you get 0. For 0, you get 0. And what about the negative values? Well, for any negative value, the output will always be the same, it will be minus 1. So here's a summary. You get 1 for positive values, you get 0 for 0, and you get minus 1 for negative values. Isn't it fascinating? What is this function really doing? Well, this function only cares about the sign of the input. If you put in positive values, you get 1. If you put in negative values, you get minus 1. And if you put in 0, you get 0. These are the three signs that you can have in a number. A number could be positive, a number could be negative, or the number could be 0. Because 0 is neither positive nor negative, we have a separate category, separate column for 0. And I have a feeling that this is where the name of this function is coming from. Alright, now let's look at the graph. If you want, you can pause the video and try drawing it on your own. Okay, so let's do this together. This is your x-axis, this is your y-axis. We want to draw y equals to fx equals to sine of x. Alright. So how do we draw this? Well, we know that if we put any positive value, we'll always get 1. So it'll be sort of a straight line, a constant function. In this first quadrant, this is what we get. I have deliberately left out 0 because for 0 it's defined differently. What about the negative values? Whatever negative value you pick, the output will always be minus 1. So this also behaves like a constant function here. This is what you'll get. What about 0? For 0, you get 0. So this function has these three parts, green light, red light, and yellow light. What about its domain and range? Can you write that down? So domain is all real values. No matter what you put, you'll get something as an output. But the output is very limited. You only get three outputs, 1, 0, and minus 1. So the range is a set of these three values. That's minus 1, 0, and 1. And this is our signum function.